Hi guys! Welcome to Super Student Academy. We review for licensure exams and college entrance exams such as the UPCAT. And in this video, we will be doing an exercise in English reading comprehension. For the directions, just choose the letter of the best answer. You may pause the video if you need more time. There will be a total of 10 items. Let's start! Question number 1. The study of history helps people live in today's world. First, people may repeat mistakes in the past, but through studying history, people have the chance to avoid them. History also teaches the people what questions to ask about the present. History is a thoughtful examination of the forces that have shaped the courses of human life. Contrary to some people's view, history is not the memorization of facts, names, dates, and places. Through history, people can examine events from the past and then draw inferences about current events. History teaches the people about likely outcomes. What is a passage mainly about? A. History helps students analyze society. B. Studying history provides many benefits. C. It is imperative that students study history. And D. Studying history predominantly requires memorization. Go! The correct answer is letter B. Studying history provides many benefits for people, such as teaching us not to repeat the same mistakes in the past. Studying history makes us examine and ask questions of the events. Letter D is incorrect because to the contrary, history should not be about memorization of facts, dates, and places. Um, letter A is also incorrect because studying history not only benefits students, but everyone in society. So the word students makes choice A incorrect. Question number two. During the medieval period, the idea of perennialism was first formulated by St. Thomas Aquinas in his work De Magistro. Perennialism holds that one should teach those things deemed to be of everlasting importance to all people everywhere, namely principles and reasoning, not just facts, which are apt to change over time, and that one should teach first about people, not machines or techniques. It was originally religious in nature, and it was only much later that the theory of secular perennialism developed. According to the passage, what is meant by perennialism? A. It refers to the works of St. Thomas Aquinas. B. It refers to something of extreme importance. C. It refers to knowledge that have lasted over centuries. And D. It refers to something which existed in the past and no longer exists now. The correct answer is letter C. Perennialism refers to knowledge that have lasted over centuries. Our clue is in the second sentence which reads, Perennialism holds that one should teach those things deemed to be of everlasting importance, etc. Letter B is incorrect because the passage does not mention or describe perennialism as those things which have extreme importance. Letter D is also incorrect because it is the exact opposite of letter C. Question number 3. Cockroaches have existed for thousands or even millions of years. They were here before the dinosaurs. They have hard shells that act like armor. They have good hearing and eyesight. They give birth to as many as 30,000 baby cockroaches every year. Cockroaches eat almost anything but can go 3 months without food. They can even live for 30 days without water. Cockroaches don't bite or hurt humans. So why do people run and scream when they see them? What sentence best summarizes the passage? A. Cockroaches are amazing animals. B. Cockroaches outlive the dinosaurs. C. Cockroaches are safe creatures for humans. Letter D. Cockroaches have attributes that enable them to be resilient. The correct answer is letter D. Cockroaches have attributes that enable them to be resilient. Letter B is incorrect. Cockroaches outlive the dinosaurs is incorrect because it is just one idea in the whole passage. Meanwhile, letter A. Cockroaches are amazing animals. It's also incorrect because it does not find support in the passage. Question number four. Bitcoin is a decentralized digital currency 
that can be transferred on the peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin network. Bitcoin transactions are verified by network nodes through cryptography and recorded in a public distributed ledger called a blockchain. The cryptocurrency was invented in 2008 by an unknown person or group of people using the name Satoshi Nakamoto. The currency began used in 2009 when its implementation was released as open source software. Which of the following statements does not find support in the passage? A. Bitcoin is a currency. B. Bitcoin was invented by a Japanese. C. Adoption of Bitcoin as currency began before 2010. And letter D. Bitcoin transactions are recorded in a public ledger. The correct answer is letter B. Bitcoin was invented by a Japanese. This statement does not find support in the passage. The passage states that Bitcoin was invented by an unknown person, and thus there is no way to say that the citizenship or nationality of the Bitcoin inventor is Japanese. Letter C finds support in the passage because the passage states that the use of the currency began in 2009, which is before 2010. Letter A, Bitcoin is a currency, finds support in the passage in sentence number 1, which states that Bitcoin is a decentralized digital currency. Let us go to question number 5. By the time a child is 6 or 7, she has all the essential avoidances well enough by heart to be trusted with the care of a younger child. And she also develops a number of simple techniques. She learns to make pinwheels of palm leaves, to climb a coconut tree by walking up the trunk on flexible little feet, to break open a coconut with one firm well-directed blow of a knife as long as she is tall, to play a number of group games and sing the songs which go with them, and to go to a neighboring house and bring back a lighted faggot for the chief's pipe or the cookhouse fire. The passage was most probably written by A. Anne, A. Child Guardian, B. Doctor, C. Entomologist, D. Psychologist. The correct answer is letter D. Psychologist. The passage talks about the development of the child and the child's physical and psychosocial skills, and thus it is most likely written by a psychologist. Letter C, entomologist, is incorrect. In fact, it is the worst answer because an entomologist studies insects. Alright? Let's go to question number 6. Another kind of reflection happens when a light beam hits a smooth, shiny object. When this happens, the entire beam of light bounces back. None of the small color beams are absorbed. The light beam bounces back like a ball thrown against a wall. If you look at the shiny object that is reflecting light, we can see images of the things the reflected light hits as it bounces off the shiny surface, such as our own face. According to the passage, what is the effect when a light beam hits a smooth and shiny object? A. Some color beams bounce back off the object. B. Only one color beam bounces back off the object. Letter C. All of the color beams bounce back off the object. And D. None of the colors bounce back to the eyes of the observer. The correct answer is letter C. All of the color beams bounce back off the object. And this finds support in the second sentence, which says that when this happens, the entire beam of light bounces back. Alright? Question number 7. The traditional art of mat or banig weaving continues to flourish in the old town of Basai. The practice of this ancient art has been handed down from one generation to the next. The weavers are locally known as paraglara, usually women weavers. The paraglaras are said to practice and were taught the traditional mat weaving at an early age. It is believed that the people in Basai had been weaving mats long before the Spaniards came in the Philippines. According to the passage, what is a paraglara? A. A locally woven mat B. A woman mat weaver C. A local banig weaver And letter D. 
a native of Basai Samar. The correct answer is letter C, a local Banig weaver. Let's go to question number 8. A camel is an even-toed ungulate in the genus Camelus that bears distinctive fatty deposits known as humps on its back. Camels have long been domesticated, and as livestock, they provide food, milk and meat, and textiles, fiber, and felt from hair. Camels are working animals specially suited to their desert habitat and are a vital means of transport for passengers and cargo. There are three surviving species of camel. Which of the following statements does not find support in the passage? A. Camels help humans do their work. B. Camels are not only a source of food. C. Camels can survive in arid environments. And D. Camels belong to the same family as horses. The correct answer is letter D. Camels belong to the same family as horses. This statement does not find support in the passage. In other words, the passage did not ever mention the fact that camels and horses belong to the same family. Let's go to question number 9. Often you feel you've done nothing when you've actually done a lot. That's because what you did do seem beneath notice. It was so small that it didn't count. But it did. Just as each stitch counts towards a finished dress, each brick or nail toward a house you can live in, each mistake toward knowing how to do things right. What is the tone of the passage? A. Arrogant B. Encouraging C. Jovial D. Pitiful The correct answer is letter B, encouraging. Note again that the tone of a passage is the writer's attitude or feeling about the subject that he or she is presenting. The tone of the passage does not reflect the reader's attitude toward the subject, nor does it involve the attitude expressed by the characters besides the author in the passage. Let's go to question number 10. The first English attempts to colonize North America were controlled by individuals rather than companies. Sir Humphrey Gilbert was the first Englishman to send colonies to the New World. His initial expedition, which sailed in 1578 with a patent granted by Queen Elizabeth, was defeated by the Spanish. A second attempt ended in disaster in 1583, when Gilbert and his ship were lost in a storm. In the following year, Gilbert's half-brother, Sir Walter Raleigh, sponsored an expedition that explored the coast of the region that he named Virginia. The survivors of the first settlement returned to England in 1586, but the second group of colonists disappeared without leaving a trace. The failure of the Gilbert and Rayleigh ventures made it clear that the tasks they had undertaken were too big for any one colonizer. Later, the trading company supplanted the individual promoter of colonization. Which of the following would be the most appropriate title for the passage? A. Patents granted by the British Queen B. The invasion of America by colonizers C. The early attempts at colonizing North America Letter D. The colonization of North America by trading companies The correct answer is letter C. The early attempts at colonizing North America That's it. Thank you for watching.